Hi, I hope you're all doing okay. I thought I'd just make a video about the 10 Twin Flame expectations that we have to release. So I'll get straight into that. And number one is that we need to release the expectation that the connection is going to somehow fit into the old 3D relationship mold. Now, a lot of us know that we are here to break through those molds. Um, but there's still all this uh, subconscious conditioning and programming where a part of us may still be trying to kind of hem it in or force the connection into that old paradigm. And um, it's really not going to work that way. And we're conditioned to believe we want certain things. We're conditioned to believe that if a relationship is real love, then it will, it will look this way, that way, and the other way. And then that means that it's real love. And a lot of those old paradigms are based on codependency and needing the other person to complete us. And so we need to be really aware if we are still kind of beating ourselves up or taking it personally, taking it as a rejection from our twin flame or from the universe. The universe isn't giving me this connection in the way that I want it, in the way that I believe I've been told that I want. Um, but really our soul wants something completely different. Our soul wants liberation, freedom, true love without these conditions. And, you know, the old paradigm relationships, it's all about looking outside of yourself for wholeness, for love, for validation. Um, we've basically been taught that if we're in a relationship or if we're married, then somehow we've succeeded. Like, someone loves us enough, we're good enough for love. But that's all like the wrong way of looking at love. And it only serves to trap us and imprison us in this need to just constantly look outside of ourselves. Our soul wants us to reconnect with our true self, um, which is our soul. And the soul doesn't need anything in the external in order to be whole. The soul knows that we are all already wholeness and love and this is what we're returning to so if you're taking it personally or feeling like the universe isn't providing for you because it's not looking like the version that you expect it to look like then um, it's really showing that you're still holding on to those very paradigms that we're working to break free from and still holding on to the illusions that love we can only feel love if someone else validates that within us so just be mindful of that and be mindful are you feeling as though the universe is being unfair or your twin flames being unfair to you and not giving you what you want and um, what you need and how it, the, how they should be acting and how this should be turning out, then just realize that that's trying to highlight that you still have some of those illusions going on. It's all about finding the wholeness within ourselves. So this ties into the second expectation that we need to release, which is my twin flame is here to complete me. My twin flame's here to make me happy and whole and basically validate me and love me in all the ways where I feel like others or parents didn't love me in the past. This connection is not about looking to the other to finally have that ultimate, like, validation and our, our voids filled in and then we feel infinite peace. We only feel infinite peace when we connect with the infinite truth that this wholeness really is from within. And we reach wholeness by 
um, dissolving these illusions and continuing to question. Basically, whenever we feel pain, whenever we, we feel triggered, we need to question, how am I out of alignment with my soul truth? So this second one, you know, this second expectation, your, your twin isn't here to complete you. They aren't here to make you happy. Initially, it's almost as though they're here to highlight all the ways that you're not happy within yourself um, so that you can see that. They reflect it back to you so you have that illumination. You can have that awareness as long as we you know, take responsibility for our own happiness, our own emotions, and not get caught up in blaming them and projecting our stuff onto them and feeling like it's their responsibility. How we feel is totally our responsibility. So f feeling love, feeling peace, which, you know, we all want love because ultimately w we want to feel at peace. Um, that's our responsibility and no one can give us that love if you know when we haven't created it for ourselves we haven't aligned with it again within ourselves we always have the love and the peace it's just we have to focus on that and realize it's within our power we're not powerless we're not victims we are powerful beings and everything really is available for us so they will reflect to us every way that we aren't happy so they give us that divine love to show us the ways and so we can find our peace again the third unrealistic expectation that we need to release is the belief that wholeness only comes as a result of reunion Wholeness, in truth, is within us. We can only find peace, wholeness, love by reconnecting with that within ourselves. Um, if we have reunion, if we experienced reunion with our twin flame on all levels, but we hadn't um, united with our soul truth, we hadn't come back to the wholeness, the love, the peace, the joy, the abundance within. If we hadn't already reconnected with that within ourselves, then we still wouldn't feel whole. We still wouldn't feel the peace. We still wouldn't feel the love. And, you know, because the other person cannot provide that for us, um, maybe temporarily they can kind of create a band-aid where we believe, oh, we found peace because they're validating us. If they're um, with us and acting in the way we want them to um, but really it's not the true thing you know union with ourselves is the ultimate goal and that's why we meet our twin it's not about getting together and then everything's amazing it's we have to create that amazingness for ourselves and um, they are a reflection of our truth, of our soul. And so to unite with them means we have to unite with our soul. The truth. We can't, we can't unite with the reflection of our truth, our twin flame, if we are stuck in illusion. So reunion is a byproduct of our own wholeness. We don't find wholeness through the reunion of our twin. Um, yeah, and number four, and that I've just said it, the most important reunion is with ourself and not our twin flame. Our twin flame, they really are just to show us where we are at on our own path. And um, it can seem as though the other person isn't ready or the other person isn't doing this or that or perhaps I'm not um, perfect enough or I still need to heal this, that, the other and you know that may all be true but 
it all comes down to when we find all these things that we're taught are outside of ourselves once we find them within again we f we feel that complete we feel complete we don't need you know need is a reflection of some voids that we haven't met within ourselves often these we want our twin flame to love us subconsciously in the way where we felt we were rejected in the past. Um, but no one can fill in that void, only we can um, heal that and learn from that. And often these lessons of not feeling loved and feeling abandoned and rejected they are a blessing in disguise because later in life they help to strengthen us. They help us to realize our own strength. And they force us to love ourselves. Often after we've gone through a pattern of trying, a pattern of different relationships with different people, trying to subconsciously get them to love us in the way we felt we were rejected and give us the love we felt we never had in childhood or possibly even past lives. The fourth unrealistic expectation we have to release is believing that our twin flame has to do everything the same way that we do things. That our twin flame has to be the same as us and have the exact same experiences and come to their healing in the exact same way or at the, the same time and things like that. In truth we have we all have our own individual path. We can often, when we believe that our twin should be doing things the way we think it should be done, um, it's because we're still believing in the illusion that um, people can do things wrong or that some, some decisions or some actions are somehow outside of the divine. Um, Something's some things are wrong, you know, there's an illusion that there's a divine path and somehow we can avoid that and do the something which isn't divine. In truth, everything is divinity. Everything um, is leading us to where we need to be. We do have free will. We can choose to resist. We can choose to take a slightly different path, but eventually it will bring us to where we need to be and that's because our soul truth our soul the energy of love is the most powerful energy in the universe and so our resistance is like tiny compared to the power of love and although it may not seem that way um Often the resistance, it does serve a purpose. It serves to help us overall. The resistance, um, it creates more pain for us. And that pain during resistance brings up exactly what we need to work on healing. We may be trying to avoid that at all costs. But then um, of the avoidance, the resistance, it does create more pain. And... Um, it does make the stuff come up that we need to face and you know we can choose to make the path a bit easier and consciously do the healing or we can resist it and then the universe or our higher selves step in and um, make something happen that gets us on track we can either do it the easy way or the hard way but try not to be too judgmental because often when we're in resistance, it's truly because we don't realize, we don't understand that there is a better way. Anytime we resist something, it's because we, we're in the dark and we can't see the truth. We can't see that um, our highest good is perhaps doing things slightly a different way or it would just be easier to align with our highest good. Um, by doing things slightly different, surrendering and following our heart, following where we're being guided to. A lot of us, with all this conditioning, it takes a long time to realize that our soul and our heart is telling us to do something. 
And um, once we consciously realize that, often a while later, we can look back and we can realize, oh yeah, deep down I knew that. Deep down I knew there was something better for me. Deep down I knew I um, needed to make this change or go in that direction. But at the time, I didn't consciously realize that. It was like a deep knowing, but my mind just couldn't see it. So part of you knows, but then another part of you can't see the easier path. So everyone has their own path and whatever they're going through, it is, you know, don't think it's wrong. Don't think oh, they've gone off track. Um, know that it is serving ultimately. And so we need to release the judgment associated with that. The fifth unrealistic expectation we have to release in these twin flame connections is the idea that life will only truly start when reunion happens. So basically putting our lives on hold, feeling everything's shit now or everything's not as good as it could be. But you know, when reunion happens, then everything will be glorious. Everything will be amazing. So it will make up for this stagnation, this time of boredom or frustration or feeling like my life's on hold, it will make up for all of that. So it's worth the wait. And that's all just totally an illusion. If you're, if you're putting your life on hold, you're feeling stuck, you're feeling like oh, waiting for the future to change, then you're keeping yourself in the same vibration. In order to create change, you have to change your vibration. Everything in truth is move, moving. It's all about movement energetically and everything in life transforms. And um, so if you're just waiting around, um, then your energy is gonna be on hold and you can't manifest new beginnings, new things. You can't go with the flow if you have these blocks of stagnation energetically. And it's, it's, a, it's a total illusion. Um, life needs to begin right now. You need to live your life now. Don't be thinking, oh, um, I'll put off doing this and that. I'll save that for when I'm in union because I won't enjoy it as much when I'm not in union, so I may as well wait. That's like totally the wrong attitude. If there's things that you wanna do and you are waiting for union to happen, just do those things right now. Because um, again, it's all about what you are, what, you, what vibration you are, where you're at is what you're gonna attract. So if you're putting your life on hold, you're putting the connection on hold because that energy of being stuck and stagnating is, you know, you're giving that to your twin as well. And they may be stagnating in, in a kind of different way, but still the energy is the same, it's stagnation, because you're like the infinity symbol. Whatever energy you are, you are on this side, you give out and they experience it and then they give it back. It goes in like a loop. So don't put your life on hold. Um, and by that I mean live your day-to-day -day life, love your life, create new passions, basically do everything in your power to become happy and whole and totally content to where you're like, oh, union would be great but I don't need it, to the point where you've made the whole cake yourself and they're just the cherry on top. They're not the, the whole cake. The sixth unrealistic expectation that we need to release is this idea that our twin flame is going to express their love in the exact same way that we express our love. And um, I see this a lot where twin flames can really just not notice the ways that their twin is trying to show that they love them. Um, a lot of people, it's not been safe 
throughout their life to be so open and upfront and just say how they feel and express themselves in that way. There may be different ways, different signs that they're giving you um, to, to show their love, show that they care. So if you're holding out for them to say it in a specific way in order for you to feel validated or like they've proved it to you, then again, you're just not, you're not recognizing um, that in truth, if it really is your twin flame, there's no question about it, they love you. Um, So, you know, this isn't about trying to make things up and be like, oh, they're expressing my love in ways that blatantly it's not an expression of love. But try to see, like, the subtle ways that, even if they aren't directly saying it, it shows that they care, basically. Um... And there's actually a book about this, The Five Languages of Love, or The Five Love Languages, or something like that. I haven't actually read it. I've heard about it. And, yeah, it basically um, talks all about this. So just try and recognise if your twins try to show love in a way that you may not have noticed. Because often if we're looking for specific things, then if it's not... Um, in that range of what we're expecting, then we, it's like we have blinders to it. So the seventh unrealistic expectation we must release is having judgment and projecting resentment and blame and being sometimes being harsh to our twin flame, but then feeling like that's justified because they're not doing things the right way they're not doing things my way so they're getting a telling off and I'm judging them I'm sending all this negative energy towards them everything which isn't love uh, but then I expect them to open up to me and I expect them to love me and do everything my way and be okay with me just not accepting them for who they are and where they're at I see this a lot as well, where people, and I've been guilty of this in the past, especially with another connection that I experienced, where I totally wasn't being loving, I wasn't accepting this person for who he was, I wasn't, I didn't care deep down, I thought I did care, but I didn't care about his needs, I didn't care about what he wanted, or what was right for him, or what was best for him, um, in truth, I just thought, um, you, if you love me, you should be doing things this way, and um, my way, I know best. If only you did this, that, and the other, then you'd see that this is the best way, and then everything would be great. Um, and really projecting a lot of. Um, a lot of resentment and being really harsh and sometimes like being emotionally or like mentally abusive and then just expecting the other person to turn around with open arms and love us and basically just validate us like oh it doesn't matter how I treat you because I know what's best so there's a huge like illusions and unrealistic expectations around that. If we're projecting all this anger and resentment and we're basically rejecting them the way they are right now, then they're not going to open their heart to us. They're not going to think, oh, there's going to be a lot of love in this relationship, so it's a good thing. They're going to think, oh, this person's trying to control me. This person's trying to change me. They're not accepting me. They're not loving me. They're just wanting me to fill in their voids and do what they want. Does that seem like they would want to open up to that? Does that seem like that would be liberating and true love and amazing for them? Or does that feel like that would just trap them and uh, make them feel judged and criticized all the time and drag them down. So we need to be aware of that as well. 
Okay, so I think I might have just said the same number twice. I'm not quite sure. So we're on number eight now. The eighth unrealistic expectation we need to release um, is I must sacrifice myself for union to happen. There's this belief that we need to sacrifice who we are, we need to put our life on hold, we need to focus on healing ourselves, we have to focus on becoming perfect, we have to wait around and do this, that and the other because it will all be worth it because then reunion will happen and everything will be amazing. These connections are never about sacrifice. Yes, sometimes there needs to be compromise, but never sacrifice. It's not about harming ourselves in some way or disregarding our own needs or our own um, healthy boundaries and just putting ourselves on hold or molding ourselves to be something that we're not in order to make reunion happen. This is totally the opposite of that. It's about being ourselves, being authentic, catering to our own needs. But obviously, you know, everyone has a need to be respected and to avoid, you know, put, put healthy boundaries up to do with if there's a abuse or anything like that. So it's not about sacrifice. If you're feeling like this is a struggle, I've heard I've heard this a lot. Oh, I've spent so long, I've worked so hard, I've done so much all to make this happen and it was um it really wasn't worth it. If you're doing anything that feels like a sacrifice or you don't really want to be doing it, but um, you feel you have to to reach reunion then it's kind of saying again that you're looking for someone else to fill in your voice because you, you're not being authentic some people might say well does anyone really want to do the healing work but we do because our soul incarnated here specifically to have this ego and the illusions specifically for healing purposes so in truth this is what we want and doesn't everyone want to feel at peace and balanced and emotionally secure within ourselves you know we find that within ourselves so don't we all really want to be liberated from our wounding and the illusions doesn't everyone want to really heal and do the work. So if you're doing things that aren't resonating with you because you feel like, oh, I've got to do this because um, someone else says I have to do this to heal or that's what everyone else is doing. If, if it's not resonating with you, then it's not true for you or at least it's not true for you at that specific moment in time. It's never about sacrifice. So many people, like, they really do, like, they're not being true to themselves because they feel they have to work so hard or well, they have to put their own needs on a back burner for a while and then it will pay off and so it'll be worth it. It's really not about that. Okay, so I was interrupted after the eighth um, expectation and now it's totally dark outside so I've switched all the lights on and I'm sorry that I keep cutting the video off after each point I'm making it's just the last time I used this video um, I recorded a really long half an hour video and then it decided not to save so yeah I'm sorry about that so we're on to the ninth unrealistic expectation that we need to release and that's expecting the worst, but waiting for the universe to prove us wrong. So expecting the worst, but then waiting for the universe to make what we want to happen, happen. We're waiting for proof from the universe, and it's almost like perhaps some stubbornness sometimes, or some bitterness, like, well, universe, you didn't 
helped me in the past when I wanted this, that or the other. You didn't give me that, so you're probably just not going to give me what I want this time either. So I'm not going to fully trust and surrender in this connection until I have proof. Um, but it doesn't work that way. If things didn't work out the way you wanted in the past, it's because they weren't meant to work out in that way. It wasn't something personal where the universe just decided, oh, well, you're not good enough for that, so I'm not going to give you that. It's not that at all. It's It wasn't for your highest good. What was obviously for your highest good was something different, or perhaps you needed to be triggered in some way. Um, but this is like what this is to do with the law of attraction. Whatever energy you are, whatever energy you give out, it will um, come back to you. It, you attract um, whatever energy you're in. So if you're not really believing and you're waiting for proof by things happening and manifesting, um, you'll be waiting forever. Um, this path is about returning to our soul truth, and the soul truth knows that. In truth, we're not separate from love. Nothing's judging us. We're only judging ourselves. Nothing's saying we're unworthy. It's just the conditioning that makes us feel like the universe or God or someone outside of ourselves is judging us. But really, it's us within ourselves um, that's really telling us we're not good enough. Because even if someone else says, oh, you're not good enough, it's only because secretly... Uh, we must agree with that if we um, if we believe that when someone says that. So it's all about learning to trust and surrender again. And the more you do the healing, the more that naturally just happens because you align. The more you heal, the more you align with your soul truth. So the soul truth knows there is no separation. The soul knows it. Everything happens to help us, and um, it's all about um, not holding on to guarantees. And this ties into when people, and you know, this used to be me as well, when people want proof that reunion's going to happen before they fully trust in it and commit 100% to union, which again is truly union with yourself, it's about committing to yourself and following that truth. Um, but really it's about the need to come back to knowing that no matter what happens, it's going to be serving you. As long as you keep following your truth, then you're always provided for, you're always safe. And if you experience any heartbreak, again, it's just some kind of illusion that you're stuck in. So it is our responsibility. So we can't have like these guarantees and then and then like dedicate ourselves. Sorry, I'm sort of um, <laughs> my mind's going blank a bit there. We can't have these guarantees and then think, okay, now I can commit to this. It's it's the other way around. A lot of this stuff is, we think things have to be a certain way, but actually it's kind of like the other way around. It's about returning to our truth. So we don't need like union for wholeness anyway. And so then our fears of, about it not happening, the fears of feeling rejected, like opening our heart, trusting, and then... Um, us not receiving what we want and then feeling so bad you know when we continue to do our healing and find our wholeness then we no longer need those things um, yeah we, we might it's okay to want those things but we don't need them so then there is no fear so then we can just trust more and go with the flow and be at peace anyway so I'm going to stop it again and then do the final one so number 10 the tenth unrealistic expectation that we need to release is I need to be perfect before reunion can happen. This is totally the ego talking here. And it's 
tied into the belief that we're unworthy, we're not good enough the way we are, and so we have to change ourselves in order to be good enough and worthy and therefore granted by God or the universe the right to have reunion because now we've set sorry <laughs> it just totally like froze then um, we have to sacrifice ourselves in order for um, us to be suddenly worthy enough we have to it's kind of like we have to repent for our sins kind of thing we have to um, beat ourselves up and it's our ego beating ourselves up before we can earn the right earn um, permission from God or the universe to be granted what we want we have to um, pay some kind of debt first and the ego says, the ego often tells us like there's a million and one things that we have to heal and um, it seems never ending and it is never ending when we follow what the ego is saying because the ego wants to pull every single little thing apart and then work on healing that and it's just an impossible task we don't have like all the time we basically the way to heal is to realize in the first place that it's an illusion it's the ego illusion saying we need to heal everything um, like in individual parts we have to dissect every little thing just the realization that the ego is illusion and the ego will tell us and these things and the ego will try and complicate things and make out everything's difficult just the realization that it's our programming of the subconscious mind that is what we need to heal um, that just makes it much more simple it's to me, I believe it's always the simple path that's the right one, the one that feels good. So if you're feeling all stressed out, oh, it's so, all so complex, I have a million and one thing to do, you're feeling totally overwhelmed, you're doubting it's even possible to heal of all of that, then that's really showing that, that it's the wrong way of um, approaching healing. The easiest path is always the most successful and aligned with the truth so it's just a realization mostly um, that about returning to love and and yeah that is kind of it that does seem like an oversimplified version but yeah it's not as complicated as the mind tries to make out and we chose to come here uh, and have these divine imperfections basically we chose to have an ego because the ego um, can help us grow a lot more we can believe in separation and then we can really really strengthen ourselves when we come to that realization that that's an illusion and we are here to just um, dissolve the separation and come back into oneness so it's not that we're imperfect we decided to come here this was you know part of the contract that's it's part of the deal here at this time um, in the evolution to have the ego and be in the illusions we have to be in the illusions to understand them to also help other people come through them out the other side as well so I really hope that this has been insightful and has maybe been an eye-opener on a couple of the points for you um, perhaps you hadn't realized some things that I've touched upon so I really hope it's been helpful thank you so much for joining me I am 
planning on doing some more videos in the future like this about the topics. I used to just do an audio recording because I was still kind of in hiding a little bit. But now I'm feeling more confident to show my face a bit more. And I just want to thank everyone for your support and for being here and appreciating my readings and the messages that I give you because this community really has helped me to feel like I have somewhere to express my truth because I never felt, especially in childhood, like I could express who I really am or express my emotions and so I felt extremely repressed throughout my life and I felt like I've had the real me like bottled up so much inside and it always felt like a struggle and very like tiring, exhausting. I feel like my whole life I've just felt exhausted basically trying to hide who I am trying to wear masks and walls up and um, worrying about what everyone thinks all the time. It, it's really like exhausting and I, I know a lot of you can relate and I know that's also what we're all working on to be our authentic selves and liberate, liberate ourselves from just feeling so trapped trapped in the paradigms, trapped worrying about other people's expectations of us and what other people think. So thank you so much, I really appreciate it. Take care, bye.